when it comes to your business, when it comes to your life, when it comes to your experiences, many of you subscribe to the best is yet to come. But for many of you with your love life, we start to create these parameters and these boxes around it. Anybody been guilty of doing that? But yeah, the best could be yet to come, Coach Cass, if, and it turns into this qualification system of what the best is yes, yet to come can be. Anybody, anybody been guilty of doing that? Put hashtag guilty in the chat. So I'm not a, alone. Like I'm not making this up. Right. So I want you to start to think about as we go through this session tonight, like what is my instant thought around love? What has influenced me for this belief? Is it a television show? Is it family members? Is there one specific conversation that you can pinpoint that changed everything for you in terms of how you feel regarding love, whether that's negative or positive, right? And the reason I say this is I am blessed, right? I got first world problems, not third world problems. I am very blessed, right? And I'm not even going to front about it. I have a husband that is taking on the load of buying our family a house, right? So that's a hell of a big deal, right? So I am, I am grateful. I am, I am excited. All of the things. And you know, there's a lot of coaches out here that are teaching tactics to be like, you know, you know, you do this, you do that to get this man to buy this, to buy that. I don't do that, right? But understand stuff still gets bought, right? But that's not what I highlight, you get me? And when I start to think about that statement, the best is yet to come, my days have been better because I chose the right man for me. Y'all understand that? And it wasn't anything that my mama taught me, my grandma taught me, these television shows taught me because many of us subscribe, right, to all of these TV shows and these reality shows and, you know, can I find love in three seconds and all these things. And I'm not I'm not down in reality shows because I got a second interview tomorrow with a major network. Y'all say a prayer, right, to be a relationship expert on a show. So I'm not down in any reality shows. But at the same time, we have to get real of who we listen to, including ourselves, because sometimes we are the most toxic person in our lives. Y'all get that? Drop a me, drop a guilty in the chat. If you know for a fact that you have been quite toxic towards your love trajectory in the last couple years, the last year, the last couple months, the last couple weeks, what have we been putting in our own minds, right? So you have to be really careful of yourself. Because they say about 80 to 90% of our self-talk is negative. And then 80% of that repeats on a daily basis, right? So if y'all have ever seen uh, Dory or Finding Nemo and that little fish that after five seconds comes back and it's like, hi, I'm Dory. Hi, I'm Dory. Because she doesn't remember. It's like, literally, we do not remember who we are. And that's why I invite you to take on this stance and the stamina of being a wanted woman. Wanted woman achieving new triumphs every day, right? So when you are wanted, I'm not desperate. I'm not thirsty. I'm not groveling for any man. If it's the holidays and an ex calls me, I choose not to pick up because I'm a wanted woman. I don't just need a random body hmm, to warm me up. Girl, get a heating pad, okay? Get a body pillow, okay? But we are not just cuddling up with any Tom, Dick, Harry, Jose, or Chinadu, okay? <laughs> just because they call us, right? This is what do not disturb is for. How many of y'all are tired of making bad decisions in your love life? Drop a me in the chat. Are y'all tired of making bad decisions? <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Because, <laughs> sis, 
Right. Do you look back on your past and say, what in tarnations, what in the hell <laughs> was I thinking? And I want you to think that too of, of these breaks that you take. How many of y'all are guilty of taking like all of these breaks? You know, Coach Cass, I'm going to take a break from dating, right? Okay. So you take this break. How long does the break last? Six months? A year? Five years? It's been 27 years, sis, <laughs> right? Can we can we stop that? I understand overwhelm, but you get overwhelmed at work, yet you show up to work the next day. And y'all know that, right? You get overwhelmed in the work that you love, yet you still show up the next day. You might take a mental health day, but you don't just stop working. Why? Because your work equals your livelihood, equals your money, equals your air to breathe, your food to eat, and the roof over your head. So if we started to think about love in the same way, what would that mean for us? Can we make love non-negotiable for the new year? Can we do that? What if... You decided right now in this moment that love was non-negotiable. That if somebody hung up the phone, told you off, ghosted you, didn't respond to a text message or a chat, didn't wink back at you, didn't say hello, didn't call you back, didn't take you out, didn't pay the bill, didn't ask you on a second date, that love is still non-negotiable. That no matter what we go through, I'm not going to give up on love because of you, boo-boo, right? Boo-boo the fool over here. That's really who we given the power. You get that, right? For those of you that have given up on love in the past and taken 19 breaks, you are literally giving that other person the power over your future. You hearing me? So the question is, are you ready to take your power back? <laughs> Can you drop a yes in the chat? Come on. Are you ready to take your power back? Sis, we are not playing any games. We are not playing any games with love for this new year. 2024 is on a whole nother level. Why? Because we say so. What I know is that you make a decision, you stick to that decision. You trust your gut instinct and you take action. And this is our community of love. Right Before the end of this, I'll share with you the Real Love Network, but understanding that you don't have to do this alone. And I know for some of you, you feel broken. You feel not enough. You feel like you might die alone. You wonder to yourself, will this ever work for you? You're wondering why so-and-so got married, engaged, had the baby, got the whatever, and it's not you, right? Some of you have been like, I'm cuter than her. Why does not work it, right? Like, like, let's be real, right? Where's your safe place to talk about that? a safe space with professionals present, right? Here, here. Here's the thing, right? So I am a mom of one. I'm a mom of one and done. Some of you instantly judged me. Oh, but why? That baby needs a friend. That baby needs a playmate. That baby needs a puppy. That baby needs a mother who loves her, right? So in every aspect of our lives, we have individuals that will constantly and consistently criticize and judge who we are, where we are, what we represent. Now it is up to us to give a damn. Who are they? Who is they? So, okay, your parent might be on you about not being in this amazing relationship. All right, mom, dad, cousin, Friend, you got somebody for me? For me, it's like, uh, I don't remember you ever babysitting the one child I have. Now, why in the world would I go get another one that you ain't helping with? You you paying this, this private school bill, right? <laughs> like, no. So we have to start to get non-negotiable with the foolishness that people bring us. You hear me? 
when people try to bring their foolishness and set it down at your at your feet, say, I am not Jesus. Don't leave your burdens here. I'm going to need you to go ahead and pick them right back up and move them backside over here, right? Mino inait, right? So I don't want it. You can have it back. And starting to set those boundaries, boundaries of what you talk about with certain folk. So if you find yourself getting anxious over the holidays, anxious or feeling like you want to retract into a deep, dark hole or, you know, maybe you want to avoid, my invitation is to just be upfront like, hey, I no longer want to talk about this with you. If you're okay with that, we could continue to converse or I'll just leave the conversation, right? We have to start um, getting the cojones to be able to speak up about who we are and what we're not settling for. Understand a man doesn't define you. He doesn't complete you. He's just really nice to have. <laughs> And I know there are a whole bunch of raggedy men out here. I'm, I hear you, sis, right? I hear all the stories on our Real Love Network sessions, right? So it's just like, I get it, right? I get there's a whole bunch of raggedy folk, but we just want one. But in the meantime, we're going to live our best life. There's many of you living very full, amazing lives. And some of you have put your lives on hold. So my invitation is not to be on hold to live your full life, but also invite love in. So if you're not taking care of yourself and that rest is not there, how do we make room and invite somebody else in? Because yes, that man does want to be taken care of. I don't know a man or a woman who doesn't want to be taken care of. Why would I want to get in a relationship if you're not taking care of me? So yes, that means that you're going to do some extra. Yes, there is some work to this. Yes, <laughs> I'm not going to pretend that, yes, this magic mic, a magic man is going to come through your door, sis, and just be like, whatever you like. <laughs> and then you'll be here um, talking about him, emasculating the man and, and not respecting him by Sunday. That's not the type of man we want. We want, a, we want a man that has some bravado, but remember that man with bravado also likes for you to cook sometime for you to rub his feet in other places, right? To be able to encourage him and, and just cheer him on. Let me give you all an example. Man, we got so many slides to go through. Hallelujah. This is just all, all, all downloads, just by the way. I ain't even started the presentation yet. <laughs> okay, so the other day, Andy is my husband. Um, he had a workshop that he was doing on Zoom. And what I realized, his love language is acts of service. So in the morning, I asked the simple question of how can I support you in this moment, right? It was before my crazy day started, right? So he had a crazy day, my crazy day started, but I had already taken my shower, had my clothes on. So you know what? I got about 15, 20 minutes to help this man out with whatever. You know, all he wanted was his tea. That was it. And he lit up like a puppy, lit like the, the whole face just lit up. And it's not something I do every day, right? Why? Because, you know, I'm also not your maid and all the other things, right? So, <laughs> right? So we, we put it, uh, but, you know, every now and then I feed into what it is that he loves. And it's just so beautiful to see. So understand, if you're not even taking care of yourself, how can you take those 15 minutes to take care of somebody else? Maya said, I want a man that's actually a man. I get that, right? There's many different genders, many different influences, many different people, men that were raised by non situations, didn't have a daddy, like women that have daddy issues. Like we all have issues, right? We all got issues. And not every man was taught how to be a man. And then sometimes, our idea of a man is a television show and not actual experience. So it does end up being a delicate balance between what do you really need? How do you explore and be vulnerable enough to share those needs? And then 
who's going to care enough to help you with those and say, you know what, I can't provide that need, but maybe we could hire somebody. 